You may not realize it, but your data might be about to fall off a cliff. Your hard drives are not going to last forever. You need a way to preserve your data when, not if, your drive decides to take the big dirt nap. In this video, I'll teach you the system that I've used to keep my own data safe for the last 15 years. You're watching Make Home Tech. Welcome home tech makers. I'm Joe and I love building technology for my home. Your digital data is important and it's worth preserving for the long haul. Think about your family photos and videos, the legal and financial documents you're keeping. Uh, and if you're a digital creator, like a photographer or an illustrator, animator, filmmaker, YouTuber, it's even more important for you to preserve your work long term. Data loss due to hardware failure happens all the time. Uh, you don't hear about it much because it's very frustrating and not many folks are brave enough to admit it when it happens to them. Believe me though, it happens a lot and it really sucks. It's happened to me multiple times over the years. I've tried to open a file and wait minutes for it tried to load, start frantically checking around the directories and realize, oh my God, my data is gone. Look, I don't want any of you to have to experience that. So I'm going to teach you my strategy for preventing data loss and keeping it safe with a system I call RAID 1 plus 1. I built the system using several different hardware configurations and it's kept my most important data safe for 15 years and I'm still using it right now. For the skeptics among you, let me just clarify that this is not a backup strategy like the 321 backup rule. The system does help you create backups but its most important job is to keep your data safe from hardware failures. Now, there are multiple ways to build the system. I'm gonna show you the simplest and cheapest way I can think of to make it using hardware that you can get today. I'll show you how to pull it together, demonstrate how it works, and explain how to use the system in your workflow. You ready? Let's go. Okay, first, go buy three two and a half inch discs all with the same capacity. They need to be bare disks with SATA connectors visible, like this. Find the biggest disk you can get for 50 bucks or less and buy three of them. Spinning disks or solid state drives are both fine, but keep in mind that spinning disks will generally net you more capacity for your money. Used disks are actually great for this. You can get disks cast off from big enterprise installations on eBay for cheap. I just did a quick check and I found a lot of half terabyte drives on eBay for about 15 bucks each. The fact that they are used doesn't matter. Just make sure that there are three of the same capacity and they both, and they all three of them have those visible SATA connectors. Got it? Good. Now go find those discs, order them. Go ahead, I'll wait. Done? Great. Next, we need an enclosure that supports at least two disks in a RAID 1 configuration. RAID stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks, and it's the key technology in my system for protecting you from hard drive failures. So here's a RAID 1 enclosure I got off of Amazon for this demo. It's the least expensive one I could find that uses a USB-C connection and it's compatible with Macs. That's not much to look at, but we're here for the juice, not the scenery. Now, you don't have to use this particular hardware. There are alternatives that I'll talk about later, but this will work and it has the benefit of being relatively cheap. Let's get this thing set up. We'll unpack it and crack it open. Now, important configuration bit. On the back of the enclosure, there's a switch to change how the drive operates. You wanna set this to a RAID 1 configuration, not RAID 0, RAID 1. If you're not using this particular drive, check the documentation to figure out how to do that. Now I'll slap two hard drives into the device, connect the power to the enclosure, connect the drive to your computer. As a USB device, this enclosure will just show up as like a regular hard drive. But wait, you say, there's only one drive. Aren't there two drives in there? Yes, there are two drives, but because we put this device in a RAID 1 configuration, the disk controller creates an array from the two disks and presents it as a single drive. Now under the covers, 
the device is writing to both disks all your files and mirroring the contents to both drives. Now, the reason it does this is to provide fault tolerance, meaning that if one of these drives goes bad, all your data is still safe. So let's demonstrate that fault tolerance. I've put a copy of the Make Home Tech theme music on the RAID 1 array, and I'm gonna play that song directly from this drive. Now, watch what happens when I pull one of those drives out of the controller. So what happened? Nothing, nothing happened because the device just keeps reading off the remaining drive and my data is still safe. Also, if I was working on files stored on this array, my work would still be safe, I wouldn't lose any data, and I also wouldn't lose any time either. This feature is the real benefit of using RAID 1. I can lose one of my disks to a failure and just keep working because the drive is mirrored on two drives. Even better, I can replace that dead drive with a fresh one and the RAID controller will mirror everything to the new drive, restoring full redundancy and fault tolerance. Now there's a weakness inherent in a RAID 1 system that you should be aware of. If you get a double drive failure, that is if two drives fail around the same time before you're able to restore the array, it's possible to lose data on both drives. However, remember I told you to get a third drive, right? Now I'll explain how you use that third drive to save your bacon or data. Data bacon? Hmm. To recap, you have two drives in the RAID 1 array with the data mirrored between both drives and this third drive. What is that for? The answer is it's for data backup and it's for staggering the wear and tear on all three drives. Huh? Let me explain. With a RAID 1 system, you can remove a disk from the array and add a new disk to that array while still preserving your data. Let me say that again. You can add and remove disks from the array and your data will still be safe. Let me demonstrate. Let's swap this disk into this RAID 1 array. Right now the array is running with just one disk and I still can access my data, but I don't have any redundancy. So let's fix that. Now you can see that lights are blinking on the device for both disks. And this means that the RAID 1 array is restoring redundancy by mirroring the contents of the existing drive into the newly inserted one. Once that's done, the lights will stop flashing and you'll have full redundancy again. Meaning both drives will have a full copy of your data and any new changes will be written to both drives. It's kind of cool, huh? Cool, but maybe a little crazy. I mean, pulling drives out of an array while they're still running? Yeah, uh, the SATA connection standard is actually spec to allow for hot swapping. The connector is designed for it, the drives are built to handle it, and most RAID 1 devices will support that use. Swapping drives sounds a little bit crazy, but there are actually two good reasons to do it. Number one, when you pull a drive out of a RAID 1 array, that disk is a full backup of your data, which you can use for data recovery and to store off-site for disaster protection. Number two, swapping the fresh disk also spreads the wear and tear among the three drives. Staggering that usage uh, reduces the likelihood that of a double drive failure because each of the drives is getting a different amount of use over time. So let's go back to my earlier point. When you pull a drive out of a RAID 1 array, that disk is a full backup of your data. Wait, so does that mean the disk I just yoinked out of the RAID 1 array is still readable? Yep. Let's try it. Here's the drive I just pulled out of the RAID 1 array. I'm gonna stick it into this drive reader and see if I can read the data on it. Yep, there's my data, safe and sound. Uh, now, a quick note, not all disks that come out of a RAID 1 device are as easily readable as this, and I'll say a little bit more about that shortly. However, for a lot of the inexpensive RAID 1 devices that are available, this is exactly how they operate. You can pull a disk out of the array and the file system is still readable. And that's actually pretty handy. Okay, so let's talk about how you should use a RAID 1 plus 1 system as part of your workflow. First, save all your important files to the RAID 1 array. 
Do that as soon as you've got the RAID 1 built and tested. Your data will be much, much safer because the RAID 1 system will immediately write your data to two disks instead of just one. Second, the drive swapping capability is something you should be using. So swap out your uh, drive once a week, once a month, or every couple of months, whatever is convenient for you or makes you feel safer. Third, stop saving important data to your laptop or desktop hard drive. Save the data to the RAID 1 or RAID immediately. And if you can, use the RAID 1 device as your primary disk for work in progress. Okay, the last part is really important. The RAID 1 system only protects you if you use it consistently for all your important data. Don't let a laptop or desktop disk crash, trash your work, and waste your time. Okay, so now we've explained and demonstrated the RAID 1 plus 1 system, and now you know how I keep my data safe. And now you can go build a system like this to keep your data safe. Let me summarize. I keep two drives in a RAID 1 configuration, and then I periodically swap out a third drive of the same size, that's the plus 1 drive, to use as an offsite backup and to stagger the wear among the drives. RAID 1 plus 1. Okay, before you dive in and start building your own RAID 1 plus 1 system, there are a few warnings that I want to give you about RAID 1 devices. Warning number one. I've said this a couple of times, but it's worth repeating. A RAID 1 array is vulnerable to double drive failures. That is, if both drives fail at close to the same time, uh, before you can restore redundancy, you'll lose data in the array. However, even if that happened, it wouldn't be a total loss because you'd still have that third disk to work from. You just lose the work that happened after the last time you swapped. Also, I want to say that while this kind of failure is possible, it's pretty unlikely if you regularly swap out disks. In the 15 years that I've been using this system, it's only happened to me once, and I was able to recover most of that data from my third separate disk. So consider this another reminder to periodically swap out disks from the array because it does keep your data safer. Warning number two. Reading data from a disk outside of its home RAID array can be very easy, very hard, or totally impossible depending on the RAID 1 device you use. Not all RAID 1 devices save data to their disk arrays in the same way. Simple RAID devices like the one I showed you just write a standard file structure to each disk and it works just like a normal disk. That's actually great because it means recovering files from the disk in the outside of the array is very simple just like I showed you in my demo. More sophisticated RAID 1 devices, like the ones from Synology or QNAP or the Adaptech card, uh, will write data to disk in a special format. In the case of Synology, it uses a standard Linux RAID format, and you can recover the files from the disks without the Synology drive. Now I've tested this, and when you do the recovery, the files come back without file structure, without a directory structure, so it's a total mess. But on the plus side, all your data and files are still there. A much easier solution for this is to just get another Synology device that also supports RAID 1, stick your orphan RAID 1 disk in there, and read it that way. Much more convenient. For some very sophisticated RAID 1 devices, recovering files without the RAID 1 device is just difficult or totally impossible. In the case of the RAID 1 Adaptec card that I've used, I actually never discovered a way to recover files from that drive outside of the array. So keep that in mind and do some testing if that's a concern for you. Warning number three, and this is more of a note than a warning, but not all RAID 1 devices support hot swapping as I demoed earlier, meaning not all the RAID 1 systems will rebuild their array as soon as you slap a fresh disk into it. Some RAID 1 devices require that you first shut down the array, insert the new disk, then power up the device, and then it will rebuild their array. Some systems won't even let you access the array while it's rebuilding. So if you set up a RAID 1 plus 1 system, check the documentation for that RAID 1 devices, and I strongly suggest you test the rebuild feature so you know how it works. More sophisticated than expensive systems like QNAP or Synology fully support hot swapping, letting you remove and insert drives without shutting down and giving you full access to your files during the restore operation. Okay, last bit. You can use a RAID 1 plus 1 system with a lot of different hardware, 
because there are lots of devices that support RAID 1. That means you can put this system into practice in a way that best suits you and your system can evolve and grow over time, just like mine. I started off with a really cheap RAID controller and a couple of removable hard drive bays jammed into my desktop PC. Uh, later on, I built a small PC with a hot swap drive bays and an Aptek RAID card. Next, I migrated to the Synology DS412 Plus and set up two RAID 1 Plus 1 sets. And now I'm running a Synology DS1221 Plus with four separate RAID 1 Plus 1 sets, giving me close to 10 terabytes of fully redundant fault tolerant storage. So if you start off building a RAID 1 Plus 1 system today, you can build the device I demonstrated as a quick and reasonably cheap solution. Uh, links in the description. However, if you're doing anything more than storing your own stuff, I strongly recommend getting a network attached storage device from a well-known manufacturer like QNAP or Synology. Remember that you'll need a NAS with at least two storage bays to make the system work. Something like the QNAP TR002 for about 160 bucks or the Synology DS220 Plus for about 300. If you build a RAID 1 Plus 1 system yourself using your own hardware or different configuration, drop a comment down below and share the details. I'd love to see what you come up with and it might help your fellow home tech makers as well. Okay, that's it for this video. Uh, remember, RAID stands for a redundant array of inexpensive disks and don't let anyone tell you different. Here at Make Home Tech, we use cheap disks in a smart way and we're proud of it. So I'm sure many of you have questions, so please leave them down below and I'll answer as many as I can. Uh, there's a lot more that I didn't talk about, probably enough for another couple videos. So I really hope you found this explanation of the RAID 1 Plus 1 system interesting and useful, and I hope it helps you keep your data safe for many, many years to come. Thank you so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. And remember, keep learning, keep building, make something great. I'll see you in the next one.